Hello everyone, welcome to My The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless, December 6, 2023. Nikki receives alarming phone calls, Lily interrogates Nick, and Nate discovers Audra is working with Tucker. Nate texts Devin from the club bar, asking if they can meet to discuss his idea. Tucker approaches Nate and informs him that he has heard about his plan to have Victor committed. Nate declines, and Tucker assures him that he'd own the crap out of that play. Nate is irritated, but Tucker is eager to learn more. Nate claims that he was attempting to protect Victor and inquires as to where he heard this. Tucker muses that this is what he does. He gathers data. Nate inquires as to what he believes he knows. Tucker claims he planned to assassinate the CEO in order to reclaim his position in the C-suite. He is aware that he arranged for Victor to spend an extended period of time at a facility in Genevan. Nate is taken aback by this. Given the nature of the information, Tucker grins. Tucker likes the notion of Victor in a shackle and gives Nate a A for effort. Nate has to leave. Tucker mistook himself for a player. He advises Nate to stop squandering his time and talent. He is aware that Audra has given him a position in their new business. He was on the fence, but his move with Victor persuaded him. They're assembling a team of people who aren't afraid to get their hands filthy and he appears to be one of them. Nate had no idea Audra's business involved Tucker. He doesn't like his relationship with Audra or his Aunt Mamie. Tucker values his edge and does not want to lose it. If you come to your senses, you know where to find me. Nate phones Audra and tells her they need to chat. Right now. Nick enters Crimson Light's terrace and grimaces in discomfort owing to his injuries. Lily approaches him and inquires about his well-being. Nick joins her and is unwilling to discuss what happened. Lily is aware. She has an unrelated inquiry concerning Newman and Nate. Nate was wrong, Nick says. Lily is interested in the entire story. Nate, according to Nick, attempted to get rid of his father in order to clear the way for him and Victoria. Lily has heard it's more complicated and she feels Victor's impersonation of a mental condition was terrible. Maybe Nate truly believed it was the best way to protect Victor and Newman. Nick smirks, I can't believe you're defending him. Lily believes they were too hasty to assume his intentions were negative. Nate, according to Nick, was the only one who stood to benefit from it. Lily wonders if he or one of his siblings would have been fired on the spot if they had suggested it. Nick claims that if any of his children had attempted to stage a coup, they would have been sacked as well. It was all about power. Lily appreciates his candor. Devin walks in as Nick tells her that they escaped with Nate the first time and that he has no idea why they'd allow him back into their office. Devin expresses concern about this as well. Nick departs as soon as Victor texts him to meet at the office. Devin asks Lily how things went with Victor. Devin claims Nate has clearly destroyed bridges there, and Nick appears to feel the same way. Lily wonders where this leaves them. Nikki caresses the bottle of vodka before opening it and pouring a shot at the ranch. When she hears Victor return, she downs the entire glass and immediately pops a breath mint and hides the glass in her purse. He brings her a cup of tea, and she takes it to the sofa. Victor takes a seat and expresses concern for her. Nikki is concerned that she may have lost all of them. I know what's going on, Victor says. You're not deceiving me. Nikki inquires as to what he believes is going on. Victor knows she's put on a brave face, but having booze injected into her veins isn't something she can ignore. Nikki admits to having difficulties. Her sobriety has vanished. She is attempting not to blame herself. Victor believes that if anyone is to blame, it is him because his affair with Eve Howard precipitated all of this. They decide to concentrate on solutions. Who can you call? He inquires. In the past, Nikki would have called Catherine or Neil. She will contact her sponsor. When Nikki announces she's going to her meeting, Victor offers to drive her, but she declines. Victor says he'll speak with Nick. 
Nikki believes the knife attack has taken its toll on him. She wants Victoria would respond. Nikki is on her way out when she receives another call from an unknown caller. When she responds, jazz music plays once more. Who is calling? She inquires. What brings you here? Nikki discovers she knows that tune after disconnecting, but from where? Nikki talks about a reoccurring nightmare and waking up in a cold sweat, scared that she had lost her sobriety at an AA meeting. She experienced another of those nightmares last night, but when she awoke, she knew it was real. She bursts into tears. My four years, 11 months, and 21 days of sobriety, it's over. The most vexing aspect is that it was not her fault. She was physically coerced into consuming vodka. Nikki describes the bizarre kidnapping and having alcohol injected into her through an IV. She is terrified that the devil has reawakened. You must be aware of this. I didn't take the first drink, but I did take the second and third. The sickness is unconcerned about how it occurred. It simply feeds on it and demands for more. I'm scared to death. This is not a path I can take again. I won't. So I'm here and I know it's time to be humble once more. To focus all of my efforts on not drinking for a day, an hour, or a minute at a time. Nikki retrieves the vodka glass from her handbag after the meeting and flashes back to drinking in the lake homeroom. She goes out, throwing the glass in the trash. Nick joins Victor in the Newman office, and they are concerned about Nikki. Victor claims she is currently attending an AA meeting. Nick is upset that Victoria hasn't responded to his texts. Victor claims that she and Cole went up to Oregon to, to determine if this woman is their daughter. She's intelligent, and she'll figure it out. Nick requests that Victor inform him about Eve Howard. Victor is reluctant to discuss it, but she attempted to poison him in the same manner Jordan attempted to poison them. Nick discovers that there has been no success in locating Jordan. Victor believes this has reminded him how vital it is for them all to keep together as a family. Nick nods and says, yeah. Lily tells Devon at Crimson Lights that she's torn. Nate is correct that Victor set him up. He responds, yeah, but what does it say about him that he fell into a trap like that? Nate used to be a doctor, Lily claims, and he always put his patients first. Devin claims he went insane after entering the business world. They already have Tucker on their plate. Do they really want to welcome another potential menace in? Nate is welcomed inside Audra's suite, where a beaming Tucker is propped up on the bed. Why didn't you tell me he was here? Rages Nate. Audra requests that Tucker allow them some privacy. Tucker, smirking, tells her he prefers him over the other guy as he walks away. Nate demands to know what Audra is planning with Tucker and why she has kept his involvement hidden. Nikki tells Victor about the AA meeting in the club dining room. I shared. It was good to do it in a safe environment, but it brought up emotions I'm not used to. She despises the fact that she has to go through this again. Victor reminds her of her strength. She is concerned that the disease has returned. He has no idea what it is like. Victor promises to be there every step of the way and describes her as the strongest woman he's ever met. Nikki values his belief in her. When her phone rings, she exhales. Who was that? asks Victor. It's apparent that it's frightened her. Nikki admits to receiving calls from an unknown number, and when she answers, music begins to play. It appears to be connected to this whole situation. Victor wonders if Jordan is attempting to enter her mind. When he inquires about the music, she hums it. Victor had never heard of it. Nikki believes it's a hint. If she could only recall the tune, she'd understand why someone is torturing her. Victor has a thought. At Crimson Lights, Lily decides to decline Nate and worries that Mamie will be disappointed. Esther brings them cookies and expresses her delight that they have reconciled. Everything would be fine if Nate was back with them. Devin reflects that they were just talking about it. Esther walks away, and Devin believes Nate should keep falling until he learns his lesson. Lily responds that they might be the only ones who can save him from himself. Nate is overreacting, says Audra in her suite. Tucker's role is entirely monetary. Nate wants to know more about the venture this time. Audra insists 
that he must trust her. When he discovered Tucker was involved, his trust was shattered. Audra admits that they are looking for a company. Tucker does not want to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations, so she will take over. Nate claims Tucker made it appear as if he was in charge of the show. Audra maintains he is uninterested in specifics. Nate deduces that the corporation is Chancellor Winters and asks if she truly believes he'd agree to it. Audra flatly rejects it. Nate believes it is Jabba who wishes to destroy the Abbots. What are the Abbots to you? Audra inquires. It's not like you have many other choices. Just thereafter, Nate receives a text from Divin that says, ready to meet. Nate says, maybe I do. Nate approaches Divin and Lily on the patio of Crimson Lights and asks whether they've made a decision. Lily says they have and invites him to take a seat. Nick leaves Victoria a voicemail at Society's bar, indicating he's worried about her. You must keep your eyes open. Jordan is still out there somewhere, and these women are lethal. Please, please, please use caution. Victor and Nikki enter the jazz lounge and request that the pianist play and identify the melody Nikki hums to him. When he gets it, he informs her it's a swing era piece called Kitty's Bounce. Nikki recognizes the song as one she used to dance to when she was a stripper. Victor expresses regret. They believe Jordan is attempting to agitate her. She's trying to break me, Victor. Victor claims that they will no longer allow her to approach her. Nikki is disturbed by this and fears it is only the beginning. Victor regrets forcing her to recall. Nikki compares this to Eve all over again. Victor swears he will not let her do this and embraces Nikki. Jordan enters a motel room dressed entirely in black. She takes off her cap and sunglasses. On the young and the restless, Billy delivers disturbing news to Jack, Devin assists Lily in a dilemma, and Tucker instigates a feud between Jill and Mamie. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.